time to reconnect. Oh, we're live. Here we go. Merry Christmas, everybody. Ho, ho, I, ho. Ho, ho, ho. I've got two very, very special guests with me today. So, as you can see, we have got Santa Claus, who, just like his buddy Tom, absolutely loves ice cream. And we're going to make his favorite ice cream today, which is peppermint ice cream. And then I have my very special guest, my very good friend, Caden Vickers, who is an all-around awesome athlete and who is Santa's little helper today and is playing the elf. Say hi, Caden. Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi. Okay, so we're going to get started. So this is an awesome way, believe it or not, to get tons of nutrition in a nice, sweet dessert and freshens your breath all at the same time. Can't beat that. So we're gonna start. All of our ice creams start with a base, and it is going to be the unsweetened plain almond milk. Now I don't really care about the brand so much as long as it's unsweetened and it's plain. And if you like the vanilla flavor, you can certainly do that. But we're gonna use half a cup of that. You two can do that. We're putting everything in our lovely Vitamix today. If you don't have a Vitamix, um, you can certainly, it's pretty heavy, you might have to help him. Oh, he's got it. More. Good job. If you don't have a Vitamix, you can certainly make all these ice creams in a blender. But if you are in the market for a Vitamix, it is Christmas time. You can still do that. Scroll down on my page and watch my Vitamix video, and you'll get a free shipping code as well. And you will learn my favorite ones to buy and how to go about purchasing those. Okay, the next ingredient. Go ahead and dump that all the way in there. Perfect. That's excellent. Okay, we are going to use peppermint extract and pure vanilla extract. Now, in some other videos we've used vanilla and we talked about how to make that. As you see, I've got this really cool bottle and I just bought this at Ross or some discount store maybe. I think it was Ross. Anyway, I thought it was really neat looking. And you can see my vanilla beans in there. And I just sliced my Madagascar vanilla beans in half. I left all the seeds in there. And I just shoved them down into my vanilla bottle. And I have probably got one, two, three. I probably have six or eight of those vanilla beans in there. And then what do you add to make vanilla extract? Santa? Vodka. Vodka. So buy, I buy the cheapest vodka because that's all I'm going to use it for. And so fill your bottle up. And it takes at least six months, a year is even better. So I have two bottles going all the time. So when one kind of, I use one up, I have one already in the pantry. Keep it in the dark pantry. You will make your vanilla that way. Go ahead and add a, a teaspoon of vanilla for me. Remember which one? Um, and I go ahead and have two bottles going, so I always have vanilla on hand, okay? Now, the other one is peppermint extract, so they're going to get a teaspoon of peppermint extract, or teaspoon of vanilla, and we're going to use a fourth to a half of teaspoon of peppermint extract. And this is what it looks like. You can buy it anywhere. This is just the one I happen to have, so you're going to use this little baby for that one. Now, here comes the sugar part, the sweet part. We are using medjool dates. Now, what I do with these, now these actually do have the seeds in them, so it's really easy. I keep these in the freezer. These are great to just snack on, and if you keep them in the freezer, when I have a sweet tooth, it tastes like candy, and I'll just eat one of these. But be aware that they are very high in fiber, and... They are 70 calories each, so I don't eat a ton of these. And I'm just going to show you guys. I'll just pull it apart, and I'll just take that pit out right there. You can buy them pitted, but you certainly don't have to. They're the same price, so whatever you can find. So you're going to put the dates, just like so, into a little mason jar, and then fill it up with water. You can see that there's liquid in here. Fill it up with water and soak it overnight on the counter, and this makes them super soft and they blend very easily. And then you also have this juice that's in here. And I will try to show you guys what this looks like. So this little, this date juice is very sweet syrup. So you can use this as a sugar substitute. You can use it in place of sugar in your coffee. 
And the cool thing, we want two tablespoons of this juice, big old tablespoons of that, and then you want to dig out, yep, keep going, good job. Do another one. You have to squish it down there. Good job. Good. And since that's not quite full, we're going to do another one of those, okay? Keep going. Do it again. A little bit more. A little bit more juice. That's good. Just stuff that dude in there, too. Now give me two, two more of those little dates and give me a little bit more juice, okay? You just make it look right. All right. And Caden has never, he told me he has never baked before. This is his first time measuring anything and baking and so I'm super proud of him. He's doing an amazing job. So the dates are not going to taste like anything. You know how if you add banana to a dessert and sometimes you get that taste of banana? You are not going to get that with dates. Dates are very neutral and they will not um, change the flavor. Even honey sometimes will give that taste of honey. So if that's not a flavor that you're wanting in your dessert, date is the way to go because it will not taste like anything. Okay, great job, thank you. Did you get two dates in there, you think? Awesome, okay, let's put two teaspoons, which is this one, of stevia cane. So stevia cane, and you can just reach in there, and make sure it's a level scoop, perfect. And stevia cane is um, a blend. Uh, it's very important to use a stevia that you like the taste of. If you don't like the taste of it, then you're not going to like how your dessert turns out. Stevia can be super bitter. Good job. And so this is one that I like. It's called, it literally is called stevia cane. And it is not quite as bitter as some of the other brands. So try your brands. If you find one you like, use it. And this is, you know, an option for you guys too as well. So... After that, now we're getting to the cool part. This is an avocado keeper. We're gonna, yes, you figured it out, use some avocado. That's what's gonna make the fat in the ice cream and that is what's going to make it super creamy. And I'm going to show this to y'all. I have cut an avocado in half already just so you can see how to take the pit out easily. Um, this knife has a little point on the tip. That is what it is for, is to whack that avocado seed and it comes right out, just like so. If you don't have that little pointed tip on the end of your knife, you can just use the blade and you'll just whack it like so. Now, because this is stuck on here really well, I'm gonna show you how to get it off of there easily. So we've got our avocado and if there's any, see this one's got kind of a little bad place in the middle, so we're just gonna take a spoon and dig out that little bad part. And I'm just gonna get rid of that. So we are going to make sure that any of the, the yucky part is out of there so that we don't have any of that in our ice cream. And then we are going to scoop out with a spoon the rest of that avocado right into the Vitamix or your blender, whatever you're using. Good, I didn't whack you and whack it in your face at all. Okay, so now you've got this empty shell. You're going to use that to grab the seed because the seed is slippery and you're just gonna pull it right off. And that's the safe, easy way to do it. Otherwise, you're fighting with a sharp knife blade. Make sense? Okay, next. We used a little avocado. That's what's gonna make our ice cream creamy. And I highly recommend getting these avocado keepers. To go ahead and take the pit out and put the flat side of the avocado down here and then put the lid on it, save it in your refrigerator. It really keeps the avocado fresher longer. So, do you want to do the big reveal? Normally, we have been doing our ice creams with fruit in there. And so, I could not think of a fruit that would mesh well with peppermint and not taste kind of funny. So peppermint and banana is not gonna to taste too swift to me. Um, peppermint and pineapple, I just could not figure out a good flavor that would bring out and highlight peppermint without having a weird twang. So instead, I have come up with a very neutral vegetable. So here's the cool thing about this. And here's what I did last night, actually. Um, for supper, I do like my vegetables, and I love to eat fresh vegetables and things like that, but sometimes I just get tired of it. Do you like vegetables? You do? I'm so excited. 
Do you like to eat vegetables every day? You do? That's awesome. Well, sometimes, would you rather eat ice cream or vegetables? Ice cream. Ice cream, me too. So if you can get your vegetables in your ice cream, why not? Then you don't have to eat them for supper. So like last night, I had a piece of chicken and then I had some ice cream as my side. So it was a whole lot better. So, okay, Santa, do you want to do the big reveal? Oh, well, I want to see what's in this. Yes, Santa Ready? doesn't even know. It's a secret. <gasps> Voila. So this is, oh uh -huh. yeah, we're going to use butternut squash and beets. Now the beets is what is going to give it that red color because the butternut squash is orange and peppermint ice cream is not orange. It's red. So we're going to use one little slice of beet and these are sliced up for you like french fries and you can certainly find these anywhere in the frozen food section and you're just going to use one slice. It's just enough to uh, color it without making it taste like beets or anything else. Cubed butternut squash. It's in the frozen section. It looks just like this. It's awesome. Use it. It's very neutral. Go ahead and dump that whole bag in there. It's very neutral in flavor, so it's not going to taste like squash. Um, it's not going to taste like avocado either, and it's not going to... Perfect. Keep going. Good job. Oh, you got another little baby in there. Make sure you get all those little babies out. Okay. And it's not going to taste like beets either. So, it's a very neutral flavor, and it's just going to taste like sweet peppermint ice cream. All right. Let's grab one of these beet babies. You want to throw that in there for me? Perfect. Awesome. Okay, guys. That is all that goes in this ice cream. And I will top up this recipe for y'all, too. So, we're going to blend this up, and then we will show you a picture afterwards. And hope... Oh, I know, it's exciting, right? You get your vegetables today and ice cream at the same time. So I hope y'all have a very, very Merry Christmas. And I will post this stuff. Y'all be sure to share and like these videos. And say thank you to Caden. And say thank you to Santa for I'll helping me. see you me. real soon. <laughs> oh, it's, you're already getting cold. It's time to go. It's the elf. It's the elf. It's, it's Mrs. Claus. Okay, Merry Christmas, y'all. Bye.